Hi everyone. Uh, I received a, uh, a comment on one of my videos five or six days ago uh, from India, from Abhishek Mina, and I apologize very much if I mispronounced your name. And uh, the question asked is, I would like to know your views on what cinema or any art in general means to or should mean to a human being. What does it mean to you and how has it impacted your life so far? Could you please make a video discussion on these topics? Wow, what a question. <laughs> and when I originally uh, read it and I did respond to the comment, I thought there's no way in the world I can, I can make a coherent uh, uh, effort at, at answering the question, but the question has kind of haunted me. <laughs> I, I take uh, long uh, early morning sunrise walks every day, and I, I kept thinking about it because, for one thing, I'm a big time consumer of art, especially since I retired, but really my whole life. But since I retired, I read two to three books a week, some history books, biography, a lot of novels, classic novels. Um, before the pre-pandemic, I was going to the theater probably once a week locally where I, I was living at the time uh, outside Philadelphia, a lot of uh, great theater in Philadelphia and also taking trips to uh, Ontario, Canada, to Niagara on the Lake every, every summer to, for a, a George Bernard Shaw uh, Theater Festival and festivals in Virginia, in Massachusetts. Um, so I was traveling far and wide to consume art. <laughs> and, uh, and then also I started going to the movies again, which I hadn't done throughout my working life very much of, and uh, I was going to the movies two, three times a week pre-pandemic. Now, since the pandemic, I have not been going to the theater or to the movie theater, but I I started watching movies at home uh, got a, uh, and, and started buying uh, Blu-rays and uh, two that had a lot of supplements, criterions. I didn't, never had a very big video collection, but when I moved, I pretty much donated most of uh, most of my uh, movie collection so um, so I'm just going to just briefly talk about some aspects of what art means to me and I think really um, really the the most uh, common a a a reaction to what the, why, why do you go to the movies why do you watch movies and I, I think it's for escape I mean we, we, we try to uh, find something in life that uh, takes us out of the humdrum nature, uh, the dilemmas that we face at work or in our social uh, uh, relationships. And I, I love movies for escape. I grew up in a dysfunctional family, and though I was not allowed to go to the movies, I watched a lot of movies on television. And it was kind of uh, uh, a different world to go to rather than the unhappiness that I, I sensed all around me in my, in my uh, family life. Um, so and and even to, even though I haven't gone back to the movies, I'm always tempted because I love to watch these kind of escapist movies in Dolby cinemas and IMAX cinemas, and I'm only about four miles down the road from an AMC that has both of those um, because they're they're they they may be uh, events of the moment. They're like eating, maybe perhaps analogy eating a candy bar. You need that rush, uh, and then an hour later you need another candy bar. Uh, they, perhaps not things that stick with you long, but while you're experiencing them, they can be uh, quite entertaining. And uh, another another aspect for me has, has been art as as a kind of uh, consolation, a, a consoling uh, presence in life. Uh, music probably would be number one on, in that aspect of of art. Uh, but certainly movies as well. And so when you're you're feeling sad, you're feeling down, it's sometimes useful to escape from the seriousness that we take our problems and to see them, <laughs> to see that it's universal, that everybody is part of life. Everybody gets sad. It's the, it's the bittersweet part of life. And I, I think movies are very good at consoling, uh, um, and consoling one in, in, in bad times. Um, and then for me personally, in the late 1960s, my college days, uh, I, I found movies to be a subject that I wanted to know everything about. I'm like that. I, when I 
get start to get interested in a subject, I want to know everything about it. <laughs> so in the late 60s, in, in my university days, and in those days I lived close to New York City, uh, so there was repertory uh, theaters everywhere. It's the, probably at the time one of the greatest cities <laughs> to to uh, uh, to be able to have access to all these kinds of movies. And and this was the heyday or the beginning of what was called the auteur theory, which was a, um, a much derided <laughs> theory. It's not really a theory, and it was popularized in the U.S. by Andrew Saris. Uh, the auteur theory goes back to Francois Truffaut and Jean-Luc Godard, Claude Chabrol, the French New Wave directors. Uh, but it, it, a part of, it, of the auteur theory is, is that you see everything, and, and you see everything for context. So you can draw connections between films by a certain director, the auteur theory being the uh, focused mainly on the director. And that by focusing on the director and the connection and his uh, his uh, uh, the director's um, uh, obsessiveness, the consistency of theme and uh, the types of movies he makes, that will enhance your your appreciation of the movie and that there is more meaning there if you if uh, by applying this this method of of trying to see everything and 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 trying to make connections. Um, so, that, so what this gives you is a deep understanding, or at, at least a, a deeper understanding, as far as the history goes. The literature, I, I consumed everything I could find on, on, on film studies. In, in, in colleges, universities, there were film studies had not yet really begun. And maybe NYU, UCLA, they, they, had, they had film study programs, but the average uh, university did not in the late 1960s, and there was very little literature on, on film. Um, and, you know, and the, the, that's only like 40 years of film from the talkies, at least if, if you look at it from the talkies, it's, it's less than 40 years and really only about 60 years if you add silent film. So in New York City with all these repertory theaters, and I would go every weekend and I would see three, three movies through the course of a day, you know, where I would have, I knew New York, Manhattan, at least, you know, like the back of my hand, the subway systems, if I needed, I used to prefer walking, I'd take the subway. It was a very, all these movies became very special events. When you go for so much, you put so much effort in having to go see a movie, they become very special. Um, and as far as the literature goes, uh, New York City had this uh, a cinema bookstore, it was called Cinemobilia, and that was my first stop early on Saturday mornings, I would, uh, I would hit the Cinemobilia books. There was really nothing much more than a closet. It was on, I, I'll never forget where it was at, Cornelia Street, tiny little street. I think it ran off Bleecker Street in the village in, in New York. And they would have any magazine, English language magazine, they even had uh, translations of the Cahier de Cinema, English language translations, which I couldn't make heads or tails of, but sight and sound and um, movie, mo uh, magazines from, from Great Britain. Um, and uh, I mean, there were several magazines, uh, and, but very little literature. It was the very beginning of this kind of uh, book-like study of films and film directors. Robin Wood's Hitchcock's films it was one of the first I picked up, a, a huge influence on the way I, I looked at movies. And Prager Publishing had a whole line of um, of um, uh, books on directors like Samuel Fuller, Alan Dwan. <laughs> I mean, they had several. I had them all at one time. Um, so, uh, so that that was in my working life. However, uh, I worked 50, 60, 70 hours a week in a job that I didn't really care for, but it provided it paid the bills and has provided me a pretty good pension, so I can. Uh, I can indulge in, in whatever I want to do in my retirement years. Um, and uh, so I've read classic literature and, uh, you know, I, 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 I've uh, uh, compared, I, I could, I've read, well, I used to study the, uh, the syllabus at different universities in comparative literature to make sure I was reading everything I needed to write, they needed to read. But then when the pandemic hit, and, and I started to go to the movies again a couple times a week, but. Um, when the pandemic hit, I thought I would 
I would uh, uh, start buying Blu-rays again, and uh, especially with the supplements. And then I started my own channel. And that, that really changes everything because you really have to study a film in order to talk about it at any uh, kind of length um, or any kind of depth. And, and that uh, plays into another aspect of art is how you approach it. And you can approach it and it's probably uh, the most popular way to approach art is as we the consumer being the judge and the jury. We need to give it stars and we need to rate the films. We need to give it the old Siskel Ebert thumbs up, thumbs down. And uh, this seems to be in the internet age of user reviews, this seems to be by far the, the approach that most people take. You have to appeal to uh, my, my emotional needs. You have to make, you have to conform to a conventional checklist of what a great film is. That's one way to look at film. And, uh, and there's nothing bad about that because you, you can develop a very, uh, uh, a very uh, 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 sort of a critical aesthetic. But uh, I, I've always been, and I, I've been like that too throughout my life, uh, but in recent years, and, 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 and to a certain degree when I was younger, I've, I like to engage with films. I like to, um, I, I like to, to sort of put a, put aside that critical, that, that need to, to judge and try to really engage with the film as, as the film that I'm, I'm watching is, is actually trying to do. And, and by doing that, by doing that engagement with a film, you really up your level of perception. You're really watching the movie, not, not to cast judgment, but to see what's going on in the movie. Uh, and this could be, uh, you know, a narrative theme, uh, it could involve all kinds of other elements within the film. What's, what's great about watching movies and talking about movies is that there's so much to them in, the, in that particular sense. There's so much going on. There, it's a collaborative art, and there's so much you can talk about as far as the artist working on the film. And, um, and, and this level of perception, uh, you, I mean, everybody has has a certain level of perception that you probably won't be able to get past. You never, uh, and with me, you know, I, I I I love to try to increase my level of perception and to focus in on what the movie actually is, rather than what I want it to be. And if you, and on YouTube, uh, anybody listening this far to me probably knows who Daisuke Beppu is and. He's just amazing with the way he engages with films. There's no, he's not, he doesn't watch movies in order to criticize them. He, he tries to see what actually is there. And I, was, I just finished one of his videos on David Cronenberg's The Brood, a two-part two uh, video discussion. And I, I was just amazed because I saw the film on uh, Criterion Channel a couple months ago and I did a video as part of horror films uh, I, I discussed uh, the brood, but I miss so much. <laughs> you know, it's just amazing, and I'll I'll link to his uh, to uh, his uh, YouTube channel because uh, you know if you've never seen the way he engages with films, it's really it's it's really amazing. And this and this level of perception that you can get in art and in, in your approach to art, I think, really helps me in my level of perception of the world around me. What, you know, you, you don't, your emotions don't predominate anymore. You just try to understand what's going on around you with the people and the events. So that's a meaningful, that, that's, that perhaps is the most meaningful part of art for me is, is being able to understand things. And um, certainly in this Blu-ray era, this physical media era in which you can get a lot of context from, uh, from uh, uh, the uh, you know in the supplements of, of, of the Blu-rays, and um, it, it there's there's certain um, another an, uh, one other person I wanted to mention. I thought I had the book here. I do. You know, excuse me for a minute. There's one critic around today who is really extraordinary at at that at that uh, expressing being articulate about the. Uh, about 
uh, her perceptions. That's Imogen Sarah Smith. This is her book, In Lonely Places, but she's on the Criterion channel uh, constantly, uh, and, and she is, um, you know, she does a lot of commentaries, and that's the kind of approach I like. If you've ever read her books or listened to her talk, that's the approach, I think, that really can make movies much more meaningful. Um, and then there's the icing on the cake, the dessert kind of thing. And that is when you go to see a movie or you watch a movie and it's just something exhilaration uh, to the max, uh, kind of a transcendent feeling that you get from a movie. And um, the, uh, um, th th this occurred to me, I, I can remember two very significant moments uh, where I was in a small New York City repertory theater when I was first starting to uh, watch international films, non-English language films, and there were a couple movies that absolutely knocked me out, and uh, one, of, one of them was Robert Bersone's uh, Ohio Sard Balthazar, Story About a Donkey, <laughs> and, and this, is not, this is, you could see this as a very depressing movie. But even even dark movies or sad movies can be exhilarating, and and it just it just absolutely transformed me. And I remember I had to walk back to the uh, to the train station to to go home, go back home, and it, it just everything in the world looked different to me. And now, you know that that kind of reaction is only going to last, you know, maybe a few hours, a day or two. But the feeling is always there. I can I can still recall. It. There's another one too. This was Kenji Mitsuguchi Sancho, the Bailiff, and this has uh, this is a story of uh, of a family, uh, uh, two children who get uh, separated from their mother during times of war, and then the final scene occurs where the uh, the uh, the boy who grows up to be Sancho the Bailiff searches for his mother. Whatever happened to my mother? And then he eventually he finds her in the final scene of the movie, which is one of the most beautiful scenes. I've ever seen in a movie. And it just, it, it, again, it, the experience was so intense. And I, and, and it, I actually had an experience like that recently when I watched Tales of Hop. And I had seen this about 40 years ago and had a similar experience. And I was able to conjure up, it, it, it hit me as hard again. And, and just like a celebration of art, joyous kind of celebration of art, even though the story too is very, rather sad. But uh, so, that's my uh, that that that's my rather uh, 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 incoherent. I'm not sure how clear I was on any of these topics or whether I even answered the question sufficiently. But thanks again so much for the question. I really appreciate it. And uh, again, anybody who wants to comment on what what art movies uh, mean to you, uh, I'd love to hear them. Uh, so thanks a lot for everybody who listened. I appreciate it. Take care.